Manny, you're next here. I guess we're, uh, um, you know, we've been talking a lot about the internet of those insecure things That's that aren't right. well prepared to be on the internet. And That's so right. Yeah. This is, I think, uh, this is one of those abuses that can occur. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us. So. Uh, this uh, it seems like this month is a is a bad month for uh, for routers because uh, a couple of weeks ago I did the story on the net USB, mm -hmm. which was uh, another vulnerability against uh, you know home routers. So this is a this is a this is a new one. Um, it's a um, it's a, a Linux based one. So um, it's it's actually called Moose. Mm -hmm. um, you know another fancy name for it. But this is a uh, statically linked e, uh, ELF binary, which infects the router. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, the purpose behind it is is for basically facilitating um, social media fraud. Mm. So um, it looks like from the, the guys who researched this, which was from uh, uh, ESET, um, found that that a lot of what is actually happening on the back end is is a lot of this uh, this social media uh, fraud so uh, it's an interesting twist on on a use for for um, you know the taking over these yeah. uh, these routers so um, sir are you can you explain a little bit about the social media fraud what's the motivation what are they doing here well so what they're what they're doing is is they're actually using the um, the theory behind it is that you know you've got these companies out there um, and you've got companies third third party companies mm -hmm. and you've got individuals and companies who are interested in let's say bolstering their um, their stats or their standings or um, views on a on a video or likes mm -hmm. um, and an easy way to do that obviously is to circumvent the normal procedure which is you know to create actually good content and have people really you know, voting on stuff. Right, um, right. So, so instead of doing that, you pay a company that says, "Oh, yeah, we can, you know, we can drive traffic to your whatever it is." Mm -hmm. And some of these companies don't realize that there are third-party companies of third-party companies that, in the back end, they mm -hmm. end up using these methods here for basically, you know, pushing false. Uh, right. So, um, so just to kind of drive, so there are a few, I guess, variations of click fraud that I think that, that exists here. There's advertising click fraud where you're actually kind of driving visits to advertisements and the advertisements are paid for right. by the number of clicks against them. Uh, there's also sort of the search engine click fraud where you can drive search results up by lots of other people, you know, basically fraudulently creating the uh, the uh, appearance that those particular things had been searched for before, right. that more likely is somebody searching for a related term. That's that would be, and this would be kind of a similar thing in social media. That is to drive the popularity up, perhaps of businesses that are trying to use social media as an advertising right. venue. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. Um, so so basically. Um, the the interesting thing about this one the you know so last week the the vulnerability was there was actual a vulnerability in the device itself mm -hmm. this one actually doesn't have an actual vulnerability they're actually just going against poor uh, credentials so mm, passwords. Yeah. weak passwords um, so you know default you know default passwords so things that are just left open mm -hmm. um, so there's no there's no magic there on the back end of how right. they're actually doing this stuff the magic happens once they they found them and, and there's mm -hmm. plenty of them out there once they found them then the you know sort of the magic happens on the back end then you know right. this this malware is able to basically once it's got a, a foothold on that router it has a lot of uh, capabilities of actually scanning out the rest of the network that it's on now mm -hmm. to find other devices find that it can actually like infect. So um, that's, that's what makes this one sort of interesting mm -hmm. uh, from the sense that it's, it's actually not a vulnerability, that it's just, you know, it's just, it's, it's just out there and you, you, know, you can take advantage of it. Any thoughts on what folks should do? <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, you know, so I, there, is, there is a long, uh, there's like a 45 page write up Mm -hmm. on this particular malware um, that does go through, you know, the, the intricate details of what it's actually doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it basically um, boils down to, and I don't actually don't know if, if, if they listed anything here about, um, about 
how to mitigate this other than simply, you know, the, the obvious one is obviously change your, change your default passwords on Absolutely. your, on your routers, yep. right? I mean, you can't, you can't run them with the default passwords or, you know, default uh, uh, login names. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ch changing those obviously will mitigate this one in the bud. I mean, so. Well, it'll we'll keep it from getting infected. But does a power reset? Yeah, I was going to say, most of them, when you re yeah. power cycle them, it flat, you know, it wipes the, the memory and it reboots yeah. firmware. So argu arguably, you should just make that a part of your r normal right. routine. Change your right? password, <laughs> exactly. reboot it. Yep. Or reboot and change your password, yeah. Yeah. one of the two. I would say both, because yeah. if, if you can continually be reinfected by this thing, if, if it's fast enough, you know, you can reboot it one day and have it done again by, you know, lunchtime. Right. And you have to worry yeah. about it for another 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and there are a lot of, don't, don't assume that when you get one of these home routers from whatever store, you drop it on your network and it's got a password of admin, admin to log into it, that that's only exposed on your inside. Even if it yeah. is only exposed on the inside of your LAN, you should change the password yeah, anyway. We had, well, yeah. we had an example just a couple of weeks ago that yeah. we talked about where the inside of the network was used to yep. get to. Yeah, it, was really a, need it was a Java-based thing. A, it was a, actually an exploit kit, I think. An exploit kit. We're okay. using uh, JavaScript in right. the page to do the same kind of thing that Manny described, mm -hmm. except from the inside. Right. And that password is different than your WEP or WPA yeah. password. Right. So right. Yeah, make a clear different. distinction. It's not the same thing as the Wi-Fi password that you might use to connect right. to your, your your router. It's an administrative password that's built into the. Well, device. you know what I thought you were going to say is when you buy thing something from the store, don't assume that. It's up to date. Well, that's true, true also. Yeah. First thing you should do is patch it, but you're probably going to find that you're going to forget to patch, and years will go by. And then when you go to check, you're like, oh, wow, they put a patch out eight months ago or right. something. Yeah. Or yeah. three or four knew of them in that yeah. time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but I would say that I would highly recommend that you go out and read the, the, the actual research that was done behind this because the 45-page the article really goes into depth. So if you really mm -hmm. want to learn exactly what this thing was doing, and there's a lot of interesting things that it was actually doing on the back end, yeah. to go ahead and read that. You know, I think, again, we were just talking about this a couple of weeks ago. I mean, this is, this is a very common theme now, and it's interesting to see the level of sophistication, the level of called improvements from the attacker's right. point of view. Uh, in these home router attacks that is, you know, a lot of the things that we had seen previously were very sort of haphazardy and, and sort of, um, you know, I, I would describe them as somewhat experimental, really rudimentary, relatively speaking. Now it's getting pretty sophisticated. Yeah. You know, things like obfuscation that we had encountered, some of the things where it's able to attack it from inside the local network, and uh, some of the activities they're performing much more sophisticated right. than previously. As a matter of fact, now you, you just uh, reminded me, so this one actually does have the ability, once it gets onto the router, it has the ability to actually realize whether there are other, there's other malware families mm -hmm. on the router itself yep. and remove those. And they do that, yep. Yeah, so. and even very early versions of it, they'd set up the firewall so that it wouldn't accidentally reinfect itself or get infected by somebody right. else. But right, right. Yeah. then when you reset it, all that stuff goes away. So, yeah, yeah it, 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 the, the story will continue, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah.